Welcome back. This is the practice portion of our Inventor Fusion course. In this exercise, I'm going to show you one way to create a corner bracket. I'll change my units of measurement to inches. Some of these exercises I'll do in metric and some in imperial. Let's right click on the XY plane and create a new sketch. Let's bring up the rectangle tool. Let's dimension it at one inch by one inch. So enter one, tab to get to the next field, and one, press enter to accept. Let's stop the sketch. Activate the extrude command now. Let's create a one inch extrusion. Press enter and OK. Now let's activate the fillet command. I'll select this edge. I'll make my radius 0.25 inches. Press enter and let's click OK. Activate the fillet command again. I'll select this edge and this edge. For my radius, an eighth of an inch, 0.125. Press Enter and click OK. Let's create one more fillet. I'll select this edge. The radius will be 0.4 inches. Click OK. Next, I'm going to activate the shell command. Tangent propagation is selected. Let's select this face. For the direction, we'll change to the outside. The wall thick. And OK. Lastly here, we need to create a hole. We'll use a new sketch for that. Activate the circle command. And we'll snap my center to this point. The radius will be 0 0.05 inches. Press Enter. And let's stop the sketch. Activate the extrude command. Let's select the circle and drag the handle. You'll see that it just made a hole in the other side. And let's click OK. Now let's apply some material and visual properties to our bracket. Let's just collapse the origin branch to give me a little more space in the browser. Right click on the solid, scroll down to material. Let's select physical properties first. As I mentioned before, alloy steel is the default material. Let's change it to aluminum. And now let's select visual properties. We'll open up the Autodesk library. Let's bring in metal. Let's right click on anodized blue and select assign to selection. And let's close the material library. Deselect everything by clicking in blank space. Now I'm going to control select the inside faces. And I'll just rotate the model a bit. Right click material. Let's go to the Autodesk library. Metal. Let's double click on dark aluminum to apply it to our selections and then close the Autodesk material library. I'll take a home view. Let's go to the view tab, assign effects. We'll check ambient occlusion, shadow, silhouette, floor reflection. Now expand the application menu or just click on the big eye and scroll down to publish. I'm going to select image. Let's select an image type. I'll use a JPEG. Under Options, you can choose a size. You can also enable a transparent background and enable anti-aliasing. Let's name the file and then click Save. And just give me a moment, I'll pull in the saved file. Here's the JPEG. This concludes our first exercise tutorial. Welcome back to the exercise portion of this course. We're going to practice some of the skills that we've learned in this course so far. Here's the file I created in my previous tutorial. Let's say I created this model using a different CAD program, and I need to make some modifications using Fusion. Right-click on the solid, select Dissolve Features. Now let's remove the materials and appearance. Right-click on the solid, select Remove Appearance Override. Now we're ready to make some changes. Right-click on the solid, scroll down to Material. 
Let's apply alloy steel. Let's say I need to make some modifications to the geometry. I want to move these holes 0.05 inches in the positive Z direction. Let's control select both holes. Let's also control select this face. Now activate the move command. If the triad doesn't align properly, you can select this edge here and then click OK. Let's snap to 0.1 inches and we'll drag the handle up a bit and click OK. Now let's increase the wall thickness to 0.06 inches. First, let's check our current wall thickness. We see that it's 0.05 inches. Let's control select these faces. And snap 0.01 inches. Let's activate the pull tool. Make our adjustment. OK, and done. Now what if I want to increase the diameter of the hole? Let's activate the Find Feature tool. Unselect Check All and let's check Hole. Select the solid and click OK. Now we've got two holes in the browser tree. Let's right click and delete the second hole. And let's make the diameter of this hole 0.25 inches. We need the hole to go through the entire solid. OK. And our modifications are complete. This concludes our second exercise tutorial working in Inventor Fusion. Welcome back to the exercise portion of this course where we'll practice some of the skills that we've learned so far. This time I'll be working in the metric environment and we'll be building another type of bracket. Let's create a new sketch on the XY plane. Take a top view. My snap bar is set to 10 millimeters. Activate the draw tool and let's place my first line. Now the second line will make it 40 millimeters at 135 degrees. And lastly, let's left click to place the line. Then right click and OK to close the tool. Let's zoom in a little bit. Activate the offset tool now. We're going to create a 10 millimeter offset of this line. Again on the other side, select the line, select the direction to offset. OK. Now let's bring up a center point arc. The first point will snap here, second point, and here's my third point. Let's create another one on the other end, snapping to the end points of each of the lines. Now we've got a closed profile. Let's activate the draw tool again. I'll create a 20 millimeter line. Right click, OK. Now let's select our original lines and delete them. Left click this line as well and delete it. Offset tool. I'll offset my new line. Five millimeters and also in the other direction, five millimeters and click OK. Let's activate the circle command. We'll create a circle snapped to these points and a second circle here. Another on this end with radius 5 millimeters. And let's activate the Trim Entities tool. We're just going to clean up this geometry a little bit. And let's activate the Offset tool again. Select our geometry, create a 3 millimeter offset in this direction. And a second offset here, also 3 millimeters. Another offset as well, same distance, 3 millimeters. Click OK, and let's activate the Trim tool to clean up a little.
this line here and this line, these two here. Right click and OK to finish up. Now let's activate the fillet command. Select our first line and our second line. There's the preview. Enter a radius of two millimeters, OK. On this side as well, two millimeters also, OK. Activate the fillet command again. Select this line and this line. Also two millimeters. Press enter. Let's apply a few more fillets now. Also two millimeters. Press enter. Activate the tool again. So as you can see, I'm just smoothing out these abrupt transitions here. Also two millimeters here. Press enter to accept. And a couple more fillets. Also two millimeters. And down here, two millimeters. Let's exit our sketch now. Stop sketch. And we're ready to extrude our work here. Let's activate the extrude command. Select the profile. The extrusion will be two millimeters. And let's actually bring our sketch back in. We'll make sketch one visible. We'll create a second extrusion here of one millimeter. Let's apply a fillet now. Shift select these edges. Let's enter a radius value of 0.25. And let's hide the sketch. Lastly, I need to apply the mirror command. First step is to select the object to mirror, and that'll be my solid. Next, the mirror plane. I'm going to use the XY plane, and then click OK. And here's my result. This concludes our exercise. Welcome to our next Inventor Fusion exercise, where we will practice some of the skills we've learned thus far. We'll begin with a new sketch on the XY plane, and let's take a top view. Activate the Draw tool. And we'll place our first line. And let's actually make a triangle. Close the profile. Press Escape to exit the tool. Let's control select two sides of the triangle and apply an equal constraint. Again, to the other side, we'll apply an equal constraint. And now we have an equilateral triangle. Let's apply some fillets to our triangle. Select these two edges, apply a 5 millimeter fillet. Press Enter, and let's fill it again. Same thing on this corner. And you guessed it, same 5 millimeter fillet on the third corner. The next thing I need to do is find the center of my triangle, so I'll have to create some construction geometry to help me out. Let's start with a three-point circle. I'll snap the first point to the midpoint of this side. The second point will snap to the midpoint of this side, and the third point will snap down here to this midpoint. So the center of my circle is the center of my triangle. We need two more circles. This one will be 8 millimeters in radius, and the next will be slightly larger at 10 millimeters in radius. Lastly, we'll create a cut. First, I'm going to create a vertical line. The length of the line doesn't matter, it just has to cross this fillet. Let's activate the offset command and select our line. Let's create a 2 millimeter offset to the left and again to the right. Activate the offset tool, select the line to offset and select the direction of offset. Enter the value of the offset and press enter. Let's activate the circle command now. Escape to exit the circle tool and let's click stop sketch. Just zoom in a bit here to get a better view. Extrude and select the region between the two circles. Let's create an extrusion 14 millimeters in depth and click OK. Now I'm going to make sketch one visible. 
Extrude, and here I'm going to select the regions that I'll cut later on. The reason for that is because I need to create an extruded cut. 3 millimeter extrusion, click OK. Now let's hide our solid. Activate the Extrude command, and I'll select these three regions. Bring the solid back. The length of my cut doesn't matter, it just has to go through the plate. Let's click OK. Now I'm going to activate the Circular Pattern tool. Object to Pattern will be Extrude 3. And now the center. Let's create three instances in a full circle. And let's click OK. Next, we'll apply the Fillet tool. I'll select these edges here, on this side as well, and third side also. A one millimeter radius, press Enter. Let's create another fillet. Tangent propagation is selected. Let's select this edge and this edge down below. For the radius, it'll be 0.5. Enter, and Enter again. One more fillet. Select this edge and this edge here, and we'll create a one millimeter fillet. Press Enter. Lastly, let's apply a couple chamfers to this edge and this edge. The distance will be 0.5, and click OK. And here is our completed model. This concludes this Inventor Fusion exercise tutorial. Welcome back. In this exercise tutorial, I'll be showing you how to create a Geneva wheel. I've just created a new sketch on the XY plane, and I've taken a top view using the view cube. Let's activate the circle command. And we'll create another circle. 10 millimeter radius here. The last one will have a 15 millimeter radius. Next, I'll create a slot for the locking mechanism and the pin. This circle will be 20 millimeters in radius. Let's create a line here, 50 millimeters, at 150 degrees. Now I'll use the offset tool. The offset distance will be 3 millimeters, and again 3 millimeters in this direction. And let's click OK. Now activate the draw command. This line here will be 20 millimeters. Let's activate the circle tool again. We'll create a circle here with 3 millimeter radius. I'll use the center point rectangle tool to create a keyway slot now. I'll dimension it at 4 millimeters by 3 millimeters. 4, Tab 3, press Enter. Now let's trim our geometry with the Trim Entities tool. Just clean up some of these lines. And then we'll be ready to extrude. Let's take a Home View, Extrude command. We'll select the Hub region, create a symmetric extrusion, 20 millimeters in depth, and accept. Let's bring Sketch 1 back and create a second extrusion now. This one will be symmetrical also, 2 millimeters. Enter, and let's hide Sketch 1. Now let's activate the Circular Pattern tool. First, I'll select the feature to pattern. These faces here. Just zoom in a bit so it's easier to select. And I'll rotate the model a little using the view cube. And back to home view. You may have noticed that, unlike my other exercise tutorials, in this tutorial I didn't create a cut extrusion in order to create a circular pattern. Inventor Fusion's actually smart enough to understand that that's what we want to do. 
All right, let's get going. Select the center. Select the circular face. The number of instances, six. And let's click OK. And here is our Geneva wheel. And this concludes this Inventor Fusion exercise tutorial. Welcome to our next Inventor Fusion exercise tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to create a model for an optical visor. I've just created a new sketch on the YZ plane. Let's set the snap bar to 5 millimeters. Now activate the draw command. First, I'll create a vertical line. Now a 75 millimeter horizontal line. This line I'll make 6 millimeters and left click. And this line I'll make 62 millimeters. Press enter and left click. Now let's create an arc. Move until the vertical relation glyph appears. That's at 12 millimeters. Left click to accept. And let's close the profile. Click on Stop Sketch. Now I'm going to activate the extrude command, select my profile, and I'll drag the handle 60 millimeters. That'll be my extrusion depth. And let's click OK. Next, I'm going to create a 5 millimeter draft. First, let's select the plane and the faces. This face here. 5 degrees, OK. Let's activate the draft tool again. Select the plane and this face, 5 degrees as well, and click OK. Next, let's apply a fillet. I'll select this edge, enter a radius value of 10 millimeters, press Enter, and let's activate the fillet command again. This one I'll make 3 millimeters in radius. And let's create a couple more fillets along this edge and this edge, radius of 1 millimeter. Next, I'm going to control select these three faces and then activate the shell command. My wall thickness, I'll make 2 millimeters. And click OK. Let's insert a sketch on this face. Right click, Sketch, New Sketch. Activate the Rectangle tool. Let's take a front view and activate the Rectangle tool. We'll make the dimensions 30, Tab, by 40. Enter. Let's exit our sketch. Stop sketch. And let's create an extruded cut now. Activate the Extrude command. OK. Let's create another sketch on the XY plane. We'll take a top view, activate the Project Geometry tool, and we'll project this edge into our current sketch. Now let's create a line and a circle. Radius will be 62.5 millimeters. Let's stop the sketch. Back to the Extrude command. We need to make sure my cut goes right through the solid. Drag the handle up and choose the Cut Boolean option. Let's click OK. Now let's mirror our solid here. Activate the Mirror command. Select the object to mirror, which is my solid. For the mirror plane, I'll use the YZ plane. We just select it from the browser and click OK. Lastly, I'm going to create a hole on both sides. New Sketch, Project Geometry, Geometry to project the circular edge. Now let's bring in a circle. We'll make it 2 millimeters in radius. Extrude, Symmetric. Let's drag it out so it goes through the solid. And it should cut the solid. Then let's click OK and take a home view. So here is our optical visor. This concludes this Inventor Fusion exercise tutorial.
Welcome to our next Inventor Fusion exercise. In this tutorial, I'm going to create an assembly. Let's start with a new sketch on the XY plane, and we'll take a top view. Now let's activate the center point rectangle tool. Our rectangle will be 100 millimeters by 40 millimeters. Press Escape to exit the tool. Just zoom in a bit. Now I'm going to place a few circles. 10 millimeters in diameter. The next circle will be 2.5 millimeters in radius. And same thing here, another circle of 2.5 millimeter radius. One more circle here. Press Escape to exit the tool. Now let's create a two-point rectangle. First point and second point. Let's exit the sketch, stop sketch. I'll activate the extrude command and select the regions I'm going to extrude. Just a few more here. We'll drag the handle down 5 millimeters in the negative Z direction. Select New Component and click OK. Let's bring back Sketch 1. Right click, Activate Component, Extrude, and I'll select these two regions. The depth will be 10 millimeters. The Boolean option will be Join. Let's click OK. And here we've created the base for our assembly. If I leave this component active, the next component I create will be nested. To avoid this, I'm going to make the top component active. Now let's activate the extrude command. And I'll select these regions. It'll be a 5 mm extrusion. Select New Component, and click OK. To finish the wheel, let's make this component active. Back to the Extrude command. Let's select this region. Just drag the handle, 10 millimeters. We'll use the Join Boolean option and click OK. And here is our wheel. Lastly, I'd like to create a follower that will be a separate component. Let's right click up here, select Activate Component. Now deselect everything and activate the Extrude command. And let's select our last region. This extrusion will be 3 millimeters in depth. For Boolean options, let's select New Component and click OK. And let's hide Sketch 1. So here's all the components we'll be using in this assembly. We're able to grab them and drag them freely around the graphic area. I do need one more wheel, however, and I'm just going to copy this wheel. Let's right-click, select Copy, go back up to the top level, right-click, Paste New. Let's just move the wheel slightly so we can distinguish one from the other. And let's click OK. We're ready to assemble our parts. Let's activate the Assemble tool. I'll select the first two faces I'd like to constrain. I hover over this glyph, and I've got three constraint options, Mate, Flush, and Angle. Select Flush, and click OK. Activate the Assemble tool again. Now I'll select the geometry I want to position, this cylindrical face, and this cylindrical face. Under Constraint Type, we've got a few options, Align, Center, and Tangent. Let's Align, and click OK. Let's do the same procedure for the second wheel. Assemble, select the first face and the second face. Click OK. Assemble, this cylindrical face. The Align option is automatically pre-selected for us. Let's click OK. Lastly, we need to mate the follower. Assemble, select this face and this face. A line is pre-selected, let's click OK. 
Let's click on the Assemble tool, select this face and this face. Click OK. Last Mate, Assemble. Select this face and this face. The Flush option is automatically pre-selected. Let's click OK. Finally, let's assign some colors to our component. Right-click, Material. We're on the Visual tab. Let's choose a color from the wheel, a dark color. OK. Right-click on Component 3, Material. Let's make this wheel red. OK. And right-click on Component 4, Material. Let's make the follower green. And the last component is the wheel. Right-click, Material. Let's make it blue. Close. We are almost ready to test how our mechanism works. First, we have to ground one component for it to work properly. So let's ground the base. Right-click and scroll down to Grounded. When something is grounded, it doesn't move. Let's test our assembly to make sure we've made it everything properly. And everything works just fine. And this concludes this Inventor Fusion assembly exercise tutorial. Welcome back to the exercise portion of this course. And in this exercise tutorial, I'll be working with surfaces. We'll use this method to create and connect two pipes of two different diameters at an angle. Let's begin by inserting a new sketch on the YZ plane. Expand the origin node of the browser tree. Right click on the YZ plane, new sketch. And let's take a right view using the view cube. Activate the draw tool and let's draw a line. Press Escape to exit the tool. Reactivate the line command. We'll create a second line, 40 millimeters, tab, at 45 degrees. And let's stop the sketch. Just zoom in a little bit. Now let's create a new sketch on the XZ plane. Activate the Circle command. We'll snap the center to the origin point. 20 millimeter radius and stop the sketch. To create my next sketch, I need a support plane. I'll create it by point and axis. Select my point, and this line is the axis. Now let's insert a sketch on this plane. Bring in the circle tool. It'll be 10 millimeters in radius. Stop the sketch. And take a home view. We're ready to create some surfaces now. Symmetric direction. And let's drag the handle. Click OK. Extrude. Select this line. Let's make this one symmetrical as well. Let's drag the handle. Basically, we just need the smaller pipe to be completely inside the bigger pipe without going through at the bottom. Click OK. And let's activate the Extend tool. We'll bring this side out a little bit. Now let's use the Surface Offset tool. Select the smaller pipe, Offset Distance, 3 millimeters. Press Enter, and Enter again. And let's activate the Trim Surface tool. Select our cutting tool now. And now the face to remove. And click OK. Now I'm going to delete the trimming tool. The next step is to cut the smaller pipe. I need a work plane for this. This one's a little bit too close. So let's create a new one by offset, something like this and just drag it up a bit. OK. Activate the Trim tool now. My cutting tool is going to be the new work plane. 
Select this segment and click OK. And let's hide both of our work planes, as well as the sketch. Now let's activate the Surface Loft command. And let's select this edge and this edge. And here we have a preview of our loft. Let's click OK. In the next step, I'm going to stitch the surfaces together to create a quilt. Let's select all three surfaces and click OK. And now we're ready to create a solid. Let's activate the Thicken tool. One millimeter thickness. Enter. And enter again. And here's our solid. Let's undo that. And let's see how we can create the same solid but in a different way. Let's activate the patch tool. Select the faces that we need to patch up and click OK. Select the face, reverse normal. OK. Let's rotate our model a bit so I can patch up the other side. OK. Select the patch tool again, select this face, click OK. Control select these two surfaces and let's reverse normal. Click OK. Now let's stitch these surfaces together. Hold down the control key and window select right to left. And let's click OK. So as you see from this node in the browser tree, Inventor Fusion automatically created a solid for us. Now let's use the shell tool. Let's control select this face. Let me just rotate the model a bit. Pan up this way. This face here. And this face. Now right click. Solid features. Shell. And for the shell thickness, we'll make it one millimeter. Press enter. Let's set the shell direction inside. And click OK. Let's take a home view. And here's our solid. This concludes our Inventor Fusion surface design exercise. Welcome back. We're going to be working with surface design also in this exercise tutorial. We're going to be creating a four pipe connector. While Inventor Fusion does have limited ability to work with surfaces, you still can create a fairly complex surface. Let's begin with a new sketch. On the XZ plane, expand the origin branch of our tree. Right click on the XZ plane and select New Sketch. Let's hide the planes. Activate the circle command and snap the center to the origin point. We'll make the radius 30 millimeters and stop sketch. Now let's activate the surface extrude command. An extrusion of about 80 millimeters should do it. Let's click OK. Now let's insert some support geometry. Let's offset my new plane from the XZ plane by 40 millimeters and click OK. We'll use this new plane to trim my surface. I've just selected it as the cutting tool. Now I select the areas to remove and click OK. Let's hide the work plane. I need to insert two more support planes, offset 20 millimeters from the YZ plane, and offset 20 millimeters in the other direction as well. And click OK. What I'd like to do now is split my surface, but I want to keep all the segments. Let's right click and select Solid Features, Split. The first step is to select the split target. Now the splitting tool. OK. Next, let's activate the circular pattern tool. We select the object to pattern. Then the center, I'll use the x-axis. The number of instances, four. And let's click OK. And here are my four pipes. 
What we need to do next is build a connection between them. Let's create a new sketch for this. Right click on the YZ plane, New Sketch, and let's take a right view, Project Geometry. I'll project this edge and this edge into my current sketch. Now activate the three point arc tool. The two ends will be coincident with the midpoints of the edges I projected, and the third point somewhere out here. And let's bring in the Draw tool now to create a vertical line. OK. Let's select the line and the arc, apply a tangent constraint, and exit the sketch. Let's click Stop Sketch. Next, I'm going to use the Loft tool to join these segments. So I'll select my first profile and my second profile. Let's use the center line option. Looks OK so far. Let's click OK. Let's bring up the Split tool again. Right click, Solid Features, Split. First, we choose the Split target. Now, the Split tool. I'll use Work Planes 2 and 3. And let's click OK. Let's hide the Work Planes now. And we'll select and delete the surfaces we don't need. We'll just do that by pressing Delete on the keyboard. Now I'm going to activate the Circular Pattern tool. The object to pattern will be this surface. And the center will be the x-axis. We need four instances. And let's click OK. Let's hide our origin and activate the Patch tool. Unselect Chaining, and let's select all the edges. Last one. Here we have the option to select the continuity, either connected, tangent, or curvature. Connected is G0, tangent is known as G1, and curvature is known as G2. And I'll just briefly explain what this stuff means. An example of connected continuity is two lines that touch at 45 degrees, or basically they don't share tangency or curvature. The connection is abrupt, like a sharp corner. So that's known as G0 continuity. Tangency, also called G1 continuity, is when two curves or surfaces are tangent to each other at a certain point. We've got a number of tangent surfaces and curves in our model so far. For example, right here, the transition is fairly smooth, but there is no shared curvature. The G2 type of continuity, also called curvature, is when two curves or surfaces share both tangency and curvature, and this creates the smoothest transition between surfaces. If you spend any more time working in surface design and modeling, these are concepts that you need to understand. For the purposes of this example, I'll use the tangent option. We have the option to apply this continuity to all, or we can apply to each connection individually. So let's say, for example, I switch to connected, and after, click apply to all. As you see, the same setting applies for the rest of the connections. Let's go back to the tangent continuity and click OK. Let's select this face, reverse normal, and let's apply the circular pattern tool now. The first thing to do is select the object to pattern. Now the center, it'll be my y axis. Instances, two and click OK. In order to create a solid, we're going to have to patch the holes. Let's activate the patch command, and let's click OK. Let's patch again, OK. Now I'm going to shift select these two phases, reverse normal, and click OK. One more here. Patch, select the face, click OK, and reverse normal. 
Okay. Over here, patch. Okay. Now reverse normal. Okay. And let's take a home view. Now we're going to stitch our surfaces together. Press Control on the keyboard, Window Select, right to left. And click OK. We've successfully created our connector. Lastly, let's apply a shell to our solid. Let's Control Select the appropriate faces. OK, now right click. Solid Features, Shell. The wall thickness I'll make 1 millimeter. Press Enter and click OK. And here's our four pipe connector. This concludes this Inventor Fusion surface design exercise tutorial.